A few years ago, and it was only a few years ago, um, the Australian Dental Board mandated that dentists had to do 20 hours of continuing education a year. Uh, that um, Obviously it's essential that any professional keeps up um, with their education. But right up until that point in time and continuing now, I do in excess of 200 hours per year. You know, to me it's just, we have to do that. We have to be the best that we can be for our patients. Our patients trust that we know what we're doing and that we're keeping up to date. Um, but not everybody does. And so that's why they had to mandate this 20 hours a year. I think it's woefully inadequate. Um, but you know, you, you, you make your own choices as a professional as to what you're going to do. Um, so to me, uh, continuing learning is essential. I think it's impossible to be bored in dentistry unless you are not continually striving to be better. And I think that every day, uh, our better should be improving. I should be a better dentist now than I was last year. And next year, you know, I'll be better again. So it's really important that we're always evolving and improving our skills and, you know, doing the best we can for our patients because they're relying on us and trusting us to do that. I, when I first set it up, um, I really had this image that it'd be, you know, aesthetic dentistry, a lot of smile makeovers and things, which I love doing. And, um, and also the neuromuscular dentistry side of things, which is basically looking after patients with chronic head and neck pain, because often that's associated with the way their teeth uh, fit together and uh, can throw things out. So um, that's the way it started out. And um, over the years, it's evolved. Uh, the more I treated chronic pain patients, the more complex patients got sent to me and referred to me. And you know, you have to just keep learning. It was part of my desire to learn more. But the sleep side of it really, really did intrigue me. I, I was blown away. I think most people just think you go to sleep and that's it. But it's such a complex process. It is our res restorative process. And if that is being affected, then that's going to affect your life. It affects how you are the next day. It affects your memory. It affects your well-being. It affects your, your pain levels. It affects you know, your ability to stay awake even uh, when you should be doing things, you know, not falling asleep at the wheel. Um, there are so many aspects of it um, you know, affecting our lives. So my reasoning for doing that uh, master's degree, and certainly at my age I didn't have any need to go off and do a master's degree in anything, um, but I teach in dental sleep medicine. I have been asked to be on the editorial board of a, the journal Cranio um, in the area of sleep. Um, when you do that, you are seen as somebody as a leader in the field, and I really felt that it was very important that I put my money where my mouth is and, and really learnt it to the degree that I did. I've absolutely tremendously enjoyed it. It's, it's just been a fascinating thing. It's really been, um, it's, it's solidified the fact that we have to approach uh, sleep apnea from a physiologic perspective because it's such a serious medical issue that we can't treat it as we often do in dentistry mechanically.